the large cliffs high above the mountain loom over us. From the beginning of time, giant rocks symbolize solidarity. People engraved written oaths on rocks and offered vows for their prayers. When Buddhism began to flourish in Korea, people began to carve Buddhist images on these cliffs. They idealized their prayers and vows by carving massive Buddhist images into large rocks and cliffs. Many ancient Korean Buddhist artifacts have been burnt down or smuggled out by outside forces, but these majestic Buddhist rock carvings remained intact. Buddhist rock carvings follow the artistic styles of ancient Korean history, encapsulating the beauty and feature of each period. They transcend artistic values and portray the significance of Korean Buddhist cultures and ideologies, as each Buddha image tells us a story of its time. The 1600 years old Buddhist rock carvings portrayed a vibrant history of Korean Buddhism in this majestic land of the morning calm. Who, when, and why did Korean people begin to carve Buddhist images on cliffs? The Triad Buddha in Sosan, otherwise known as the Smile of Pekje, is said to be from the 6th century or beginning of the 7th century. The other rock carvings that follow the Pekje carving style is the Triad Buddha of Taeyeon. Buddhist images that were created during the Three Kingdoms period were relatively proportionate to the actual size of people. In 384, the Chinese emperor sent Marinanta, an Indian monk, as an envoy to King Chimnyu, and shortly thereafter adopted Buddhism. Within the Three Kingdoms, the Pekje Kingdom embraced Buddhism the strongest. The side of the rock carving stand a few meters above the Dharma Hall of the Teuram Hermitage. It had been buried for many centuries and placed in the Dharma Hall after its excavation. The Triad Buddha of Sosan and the Triad Buddha of Taeyang represents the Buddhist rock carvings of the Pekje period. The formation of a smaller bodhisattva in the center with two Buddhas positioned on both sides is unique to the Triad Buddha of Taeyeon. It is said that the rock carvings of Taeyeon were created in sincere hope for the reincarnation of King Song, who lost his life during the war with the Shila Kingdom. King Song of Pekje was known to be a great patron of Buddhism. In 558, he sent an envoy with an image of Shakyamuni Buddha and several sutras to the Japanese court. That was the beginning of Buddhism in Japan. King Song maintained an alliance with the Shila kingdom to propagate Buddhism, but was betrayed and conquered by the Shila. The raised right hand with fingers extended, raised to the shoulder height is the Adaya Mudra, and the downward directed palm is the Varada Mudra. The broad smile of the Buddha is a distinct characteristic of picture style carvings. Although different scholars have different opinions, the common configuration of the Triad Buddha is for the Shakyamuni Buddha and the Dipankara Buddha to be positioned between the Maitreya Bodhisattva. The Sosan and Taeyang County rock carvings are both representative of the artistic style of the Pekje period. 제가 수도를 그 서울에서 천도를 해서 공주 부여 시대가 되면은 어그 불교 내지 불교 문화가 중국의 
산동반도에서 어, 넘어오고 있습니다. 어, 즉 산동반도의 어, 불교나 불상 더 나아가서는 공연 석굴이나 그 용문 석굴의 어, 불상이나 불교 문화가 어, 들어오는 그 입구가 되는 곳이 바로 태안과 서산 지역입니다. 이러한 태안과 서산 지역에 어, 이러한 그 마애불들이 에, 많이 새겨진다는 것은 중국의 그 불교 내지 불교 문화를 유입하는 것과 아주 밀접한 관계를 가지고 있다고 이렇게 생각되어집니다. No Buddha images are identical to one another. The smile of Pekche and the face of Pekche were both manifested through creative reanalyzation and recomposition. The actual Buddha image is tucked away under the stream of Mount Kaya in Yonghyeonli Sosan. The Pekche people were devoted to the Buddha's face ever since Buddhism entered into their kingdom. King Bop banned people from all types of killing and burned all fishing and hunting tools. He also ordered for all the national rituals to be conducted as Buddhist rituals. King Bop was responsible for the profound respect of Buddhism from all the people in the Pekche Kingdom. The Triad Buddha of Sosan stand magnificently as passerbys remark at its beauty. The Triad Buddha stands 200 meters above sea level on the north section of Mount Kaya. The belief that anybody can become a Buddha soon became a strong aspiration for the Pekche people. The rock carving is the idealization of the desires for the Pekche people wanting to become Buddhas. The Buddha's broad smiles flicker gently with the various angles of sunlight. 법화경 사상에서 나온 것인데요. 그 수기 삼존 불이라고 합니다. 즉 과거, 현재, 미래의 부처님들이 계속 그 착한 일을 하면은 어즉 부처님이 된다. 그런 그 사상인데 누구나 다 착한 일을 하면 부처님이 된다는 그런 사상에서 그 불상이 조성되었다 이렇게 보시면 되겠고요. 이 서산 마애불은 우리나라 최초로 한국적인 즉 백제적인 얼굴을 완성했다. 즉 백제 사람의 그 온화한 그런 모습을 또 어, 부처님을 이상화시킨 그런 백제 사람이 부처님이 된 그런 모습을 어, 형상화했다. The Sosan rock carving represents the Pekche people's view of the Buddha mind and the joy of inception of enlightenment. Large round eyes and a flat nose are common representations of Korean facial features. This serene smile is known as the smile of Pekche. It is estimated that this rock carving was created in the end of the 6th century, approximately 200 years after Buddhism entered Pekche. These rock carvings were made in the utmost grandeur because the entire nation had a Buddhist foundation. The main Buddha statue represents his compassion as he holds both the Abhaya Mudra and the Varada Mudra. The robes knots on the Triad Buddha of Taeyan are characteristic of the Pekche carving style. The Bodhisattva on the left with a contemplative smile is the Maitreya Bodhisattva in semi-sitting contemplation. The Bodhisattva on the right is wearing an ornamental crown and holding a pearl, while both her arms are covered by a piece of cloth. This masterpiece is the best known for its elegant and schematic formation. Unlike the Koguryo Kingdom, which slowly starts to stray to Taoism, the Pekche people embrace Buddhism and practice the Buddha Dharma until its demise.
The Baekje Kingdom was responsible for heightening Buddhist culture in Korea through development in Buddhist education and active Buddhist propagation. However, they were conquered by the Shila Kingdom in 660. Korean Buddhism evolved with the flow of events according to Korean history. The Shila Kingdom was the last of the three kingdoms to adopt Buddhism. The Shila Kingdom was the most primitive out of the three kingdoms until their adoption of Buddhism. Although the Shila Kingdom was the last of the three kingdoms to adopt Buddhism, Shila established a firm foundation for Korean Buddhist education and Korean Buddhism. The rock carvings of the early Shila period are very picturesque. The rock carvings of the Shinsansa Monastery Grotto at Mount Tansok and the rock carvings of Topgop of Mount Namsan both shows in detail the Pure Land of the Buddha and the world of the Maitreya. Just like the Pekche, the early Shila also followed the Maitreya faith. Many masterpieces were made during the unified Shila period. The intricate details on the rock carvings portray the advancements in Korean Buddhist education and doctrines made by important skullum rocks, such as Wonhyo and Wisang. The Triad Buddha rock carvings of Chilburam Hermitage in Mount Namsam of Gyeongju is representative of the beauty and the style of the Shila period. Various rock carvings were made across Korea during the end of the Shila period and throughout the Sorabo period. The Hwarang institution played an important role in exporting Buddhism from the royalties into the public. Within the Shila society, the Hwarang Institution was a group of young intellectuals in training to become a high-ranking general or a scholar monk, such as General Kim Yushin or Master Wang Guang. The rock carvings of Shinsansa Temple portray the Buddhist viewpoint of the Hwarang Institute of Shila. As told in the five secular injunctions, Buddhism was the focal point for the Hwarang. The Maitreya faith has its roots based on the Sutra of the Ascent of Maitreya and the Sutra on the Descent of Maitreya and is not an old-time faith. To the Hwarangs, the Maitreya was an alternative answer for a savior and the idealization of faith for their vows. Mount Tansok is 827 meters above sea level and known to be the practice grounds of General Kim Yushin. The mountain is named after the square-shaped rock 10 meters above the cliff aptly called the Dansok, which means square rock in Korean. Images of the Buddha, Bodhisattvas, and offering statues are carved alongside the 8 meters tall Maitreya Bodhisattva. The Shinsansa temple rock carvings are said to be created in the early 7th century. When Master Wang Guang returned from his studies in China, he propagated the five secular injunctions. During that time, the Maitreya faith was very popular and was followed by the Hwarang Institute. Hyunjae는 수행하고 있지만은 미래는 불상이 된다는 것이나 그 현재에도 현재는 화랑도로 수행을 해서 미래의 국가의 동량이 된다는 것이 일치하는 그런 사상이기 때문에. 특히 화랑도들은 이 미륵 신앙을 굉장히 선호를 했습니다. 따라서 미륵 보살 상을 많이 조성을 해서 자기네들은 미륵을 믿는 그러한 무리라고 해서 미륵 낭도라고 이렇게 이름을 붙였다는 것은 김유신 장군절에 잘 보여주고 있는 것입니다. Contrary to the rock carvings of Shinsansa Temple, where the central image was the Buddha, the rock carvings of Topgop is much more picturesque. 
Various images, such as images of pagodas, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, are all crammed on a 10-meter tall rock. It is estimated that the Topgok rock carvings were created a little later than the Shinsansa temple rock carvings during the mid-7th century. Around 650, Shula Buddhism was well established in the field of Buddhist education and doctrines. During this time, within the Shila kingdom, the Vinaya of the Venerable Precept Masters of Shila became well established and the rules that all Buddhists must observe in the daily life became accepted custom. The king abstained from consuming meat and alcohol and ordered that no living animals to be killed, as the people aimed to build an ethical and moral Buddhist nation by avoiding reckless behavior. The world of the Buddha, as dreamt by the Shila people, is expressed in its entirety. The top gok rock carvings portray in detail the strong will for the unification of the three kingdoms, a world of extreme ideals. This is what the people of Shila thought of as their pure land of Buddha. Images of pagodas and Buddhas are carved on a 10 meter high rock. Positioned on both sides are the nine story and seven story pagodas, approximately five meters high. The Buddha's authority is depicted by the canopy that covers the seating and is carved between the two pagodas. The top gok rock carvings have various Buddhist icons and is an impressive study on the architectural style showed in the Buddhist image of its time. A carving of an offering statue joins its palm together towards the sitting Buddha and the Buddha statue on the southeastern section of the rock. The image of the old monk practicing under the trees is beautifully portrayed. Behind the stone statue of the standing Buddha is the Triad Buddha rock carvings. The Triad Buddha rock carvings are encased within a tabernacle. There is a halo behind the Buddha's head. This is the basic style of the early Shila rock carvings. Shila carvings are very beautiful and very beautiful. 줄수 있는 데 비해서 어, 통일 신라 마이블들은 어, 그 어, 아주 세련되었고 또 우리 인체의 모습을 잘 나타내는 듯한 그런 어, 사실적인 조각을 어, 주로 표현하고 있어서 또렷한 차이를 느낄 수가 있습니다. It is said that there were over a hundred Buddhist temples on Mount Namsan in Gyeongju during the Unified Shila period. The Chilburam Hermitage is one of them. During the unified Shila period, Buddhist propagation was impossible without the support from the royalty. This was also the time in which Master Wonhyo and Wisang studied Buddhism overseas. Enjoying the blessing of peace, people began to make large bells from the iron that were used to create weapons. The bell of King Songdok, otherwise known as the Emile Bell, was created during this period. This Chilburam Marble is made of the Sabangbull and the Sabangbull. The Chilburam is the name of the Chilburam. In the area of the area, 
그 금강 반야경이라고 하는 대승불교에서 공 사상을 얘기하는 그 경전이 돌 위에 쓰여져 있는 석경이 함께 나왔는데요. 어, 이 불상 마애불 주변에 이제 전각을 세워서 그 전각의 벽을 이 금강 반야경 석경으로 장식했을 거라고 봅니다. The magnificent image of the seven Buddhas is surrounded by the sutras engraved in stone. prevailed in the Shila period due to the martyrdom of Ichadon and reached its ideological and cultural zenith during the unified Shila period. Although Buddhist works were held on a national scale and royalties and noblemen enjoyed the reign of peace, the commoners were still succumbed to forced labor, taxation, and illnesses. The royalty and noblemen only wanted good merits from the donations that were extorted from the commoners, and scholar monks who studied overseas were often associated with corrupt power. Buddhist temples were reigned over landlords with great wealth. Various Buddhist sects were divided due to doctrine analysis. Shila Buddhism did not last very much longer. Many scholars have debated over time of this creation for this masterpiece. A massive rock-carved image of the Maitreya can be found on the northern slope of Kujongbong in Mount Wolchul, otherwise known as Wolchulsan. It's called the Sukkabul. It's called the Sukkabul. 통일신라 시대의 불상하고는 약간 다릅니다. 통일신라 시대는 사실적인 불상인데 비해서 이것은 상당히 도식적인 그런 부처님 상입니다. 그래서 이런 거구의 도식적인 마애불들은 그 통일신라 직후 어, 후상국에서부터 어, 고려 시대에 걸쳐 고려 초에 걸쳐서 많이 조성됩니다. From afar, the rock carvings of Mount Wolchul has a similar posture and stature as the Buddha in the Sokkaram Grotto. If the Buddha at the Sokkaram Grotto has a strikingly beautiful symmetry and an elegant figure, the rock carvings of Mount Wolchul gives off a magnificent and immense aura. The social undergoing in the age of the late Shila and the early Koryo was a time of revolution for the nation and for Korean Buddhism. Zen monks, led by Zen master Doi, left the corrupted Buddhist monasteries and established Zen monastery in the rural areas. The Zen monasteries in these areas became the nucleus for Buddhism for the commoners. In Yongam, situated afar from Sorabo, the carvings of the Shakyamuni Buddha has its influence by the Zen sect. The landed gentry and the commoners of the rural areas took refuge in Zen Buddhism. The Zen monks did not reform the commoners to practice Hwadu meditation. The commoners voluntarily became adherents of the Zen monastery as they were drawn to the simple lifestyles of the Zen monks.
The central force led the power struggle within the country. The commoners responded positively to the Zen sect who insisted for class equality. The commoners were also drawn to the Zen monks' self-sufficient and self-supporting lifestyles. However, the commoners felt an ideological barrier to the Zen teaching's emphasis on constant Buddhist practices. For the commoners, in this difficult time, the only place they were able to lean on was the Maitreya. There is no need to follow the particular sutra or recite a specific mantra to the Maitreya. Even if one was unfamiliar with the sutras or did not have the key word to meditate upon, nobody would reprehend them. The Buddha's rock carving made in the mountains were made closer to the villages. A tabernacle was made by hollowing out rocks and a stone roof was placed on top. This way the Maitreya would not get wet when it rained. The commoners simply had to prostrate and to pray for their wish by the feet of the Maitreya. Wherever there was a mountain, a village, or a numinous rock, one was able to find the statue of the Maitreya. Most of the Buddhist rock carvings made in the Koryo period is of the Maitreya. The Koryo period rock carvings are characteristic of their magnificent rustic asymmetry. The body of the stone Maitreya was carved first, then its head was created and attached afterwards. The Sita Shakyamuni rock carvings of Sungasa Temple is a majestic proportionate figure with overall balance. The Yongmiri Stone Standing Buddha is the largest Buddha statue in Korea and is also from the Koryo period. The artistic characteristics of rock carvings of the Koryo period is relevant to Koryo Buddhism and the regional history of the period. The North Rock Cut Seated Maitreya Buddha of Tehengsa Temple was buried under for many centuries until it was unearthed during restoration construction of the temple. The 4.2 meters tall Maitreya Buddha is a large statue with attributes of Buddhist paintings created in the early Koryo period. The main Buddha stands in the center and a heavenly maid is carved on each side of four corners. Fancy yet elegant, the images on this rock carving is delicately depicted as that of a Koryo Buddhist painting. The Buddhist temples of the Koryo period was the region of the Kam, a place of tranquil that was as dignified and solemn as the expressions of the rock carvings of this period. Young men became ordained Buddhist monks to avoid from getting enlisted in the army, and servants who betrayed their masters entered Buddhist temples to hide from district officials. The Buddhist temple served as a refuge for communists, but from the eyes of the rulers, the temples was a phenomenon that disrupted social order. According to the Buddhist temple records, it is said that there were over a hundred thousand Buddhist monks across Korea in the 10th century. The relationship between the royalty and the Buddhist temples became much more extravagant than during the end of the Shila period. People began competitively collecting gold and silver for copying the sutras, and it became popular to create statues of Buddha in gold and steel. A magnificent five meters tall Buddhist rock carving stands under the Bibong of Mount Pukan. The rock carvings carved onto the massive cliff where the entire landscape of Seoul can be seen. A large Buddha image is carved on a slightly buff rectangular cliff. This masterpiece is known for its aesthetic beauty among all the other rock carvings in the Koryo period. 
This majestic Buddha statue was built according to the faith of virtue of the ruling powers and the faith of prosperity by the commoners. As the central authority collapsed, many people plotted for revolt and various peasantry war took place across the kingdom. The local gentry class created massive Maitreya Buddha to display their own power. They used a 12-meter bedrock for the body and sculpted a Buddha head separately and placed it over the body. The Ichondong Standing Buddha, otherwise known as the Chebiwan Buddha, was built to display the authority of the local gentry class. There are various creases in the garments carved onto this magnificent rock. The creases in the garments show a voluptuous and opulent beauty. Whereas the large and long eyes and a tall nose show distinctively different features. あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ
The Chosun period's policy of appraising Confucianism and rejecting Buddhism changed the lifestyles of the Korean people. 조선 시대는 석불을 많이 조성하지 않은 데 비해서 어, 조선의 왕실이라든가 혹은 또 귀족들은 양반들은 자기네들의 무덤에다가 조상의 무덤을 지켜주는 그러한 성물들을 많이 조성을 했습니다. 말하자면 문무관석이죠. 그런 성물들을 많이 조성했는데 대개 석조각들은 불상을 만들지 않고 대부분 다 말하자면 그런 그 이런 막 무덤 조각을 많이 만들었습니다. The government banned the people to carve Buddhist images. This was recorded clearly in the official documents called the Gyeongguk Taejeon in 983. To become an ordained monk, one had to give all their wealth to the country and receive official approval from the state. There was a limitation of 60 people within a three years period that was able to receive the official approval. Ordained monks were given restrictions on their place of residence and where they can go and donations to monks were forbidden. In those days, government officials received the title of an authentic Confucian scholar by who was able to attack Buddhism the most. Nevertheless, Confucianism played no part to the commoners who had to endure grim realities of life day to day. Commonly known as the Pyongnani Minbu, this standing Buddha carved on marble looks like the Buddha, but serves as a deity that protects the village. Somebody who still believed in the devotion for an object of faith carved the image of the Buddha as a patron saint to protect this village. The stone statue holding the lotus with her two hand is the statue of Kwanin Bodhisattva. The Bodhisattva stands under the Zelkova tree by the entrance of the village, just like a mother waiting for her child. The commoners needed a prop where they could lean on. Because Korean Buddhism was degraded, people began to correlate Buddhism with the National Defense Buddhism and Feminist Buddhism. Master Sosan is known for his actions for National Defense Buddhism. Why did a Sun Buddhist master volunteer himself to fight in among bloodshed out in the battlefield? During that time, Buddhist monks were not allowed within the four main gates of Seoul and sent to forced labor all the time. The monks were treated worse than the lowest class of people. Before Sosan Desa led the monk militia, it is said that he had a revelation with his ancestors. What did Sosan Desa request from his forefathers, and what sort of thoughts came across his mind as he compiled a monk militia? Even if I die, and the monks of the next generation can live, as long as the supreme and incomparable wisdom of the Buddha can continue. Sosan Tessa brought together all the monks and organized them into guerrilla units and fought against the Japanese in the Japanese invasion of Korea. After the war, though they were still not exempt from forced labor, they were able to receive small recognition for their service. The Maitreya Buddha carved on rock that Pong Chong Dong was created during the time of Sosan Tessa. This piece is carved on the surface of a rock located at mid slope of Mount Kwanak in Seoul. It is lightly engraved to show only the outline. The overall feature of the seated image captured in gentle curved lines harmonizes well with its soft expressions, making it one of the representative rock carved Buddha images of the 17th century. An inscription is at the right of the image. Mr. and Mrs. Park San Hee carved this image in 1630 during the eighth year of King Injo's reign of Choson.
From these engravings, one can see Master Sosan's dedication for Buddhist propagations and his vows for the supreme and incomparable wisdom of Buddha during Vesak. Humiliation and dishonor of the Three Jewels continued throughout the country. Confucian scholars openly disgraced Buddhist monks leaving Seoul. In his garland, Venerable Bo Wu expressed the current situation in Buddhism in this time. The sweeping wind is hidden by the fan and the luster of Buddha's light shines no more. In general, Buddhist temples started disappearing from the country and monks no longer lived in temples. The 13.4 meters tall Buddha statue in Hakdoam Hermitage was created under the patronage of Empress Myeongsong in 1872. Even under severe oppression, Buddhism prevailed due to the deep faith from the woman in the royal family. It was during this time that Yu De Chi lived within the Four Gates of Seoul to teach the young people of the Reformation Party about Buddhism. Why did these young scholars want to learn about Buddhism? It was to build the theological foundations of the new generation through Buddhist concepts of compassion and equality. Internally, the dynasty was losing power and foreign forces were watching for a good chance for invasion. Empress Myeongsung prayed earnestly for Avalokiteshvara's strength to be bestowed upon her. Unfortunately, Empress Myeongsung was assassinated by the Japanese forces before she could witness the establishment of the Korean Empire. Korean Buddhism survived to this day due to the deep faith of the woman in the royal family. This Buddhist rock carving was created with very light embossed carvings, and it seems as though a Buddhist painting was moved onto the rock cliffs. It is said that the rock carvings of Hakdoam Hermitage was outlined by Kumo Changgyeok, the most prestigious Buddhist painting specialist of the time, and five rock carvers completed the sculpture. The rock carving of Hakdoam Hermitage is Choson period's final act of Buddhist service. It is very unusual for a Buddhist rock carving to have a sarya storage. It is important to note that these carvings are not just simple images, but each carving has been given life through their strong faith. The Korean women played a large role in preserving Korean Buddhism. The anti-Buddhist policy of the Chosun period and the Korean woman's unconditional faith for Buddhism gave rise to a new form of spiritual faith. The age of anxiety continued as Buddhist monastery closed down and monks went into the mountains. Buddhism could not serve its role as a national religion. Thus, during this time, the public turned to folk faith and faith of shamanism. The Sammaksa Temple's Triad Buddha is stored within the Shrine Hall of the Big Dipper, otherwise known as the Chilsonga Hall, under the stone tablets called the Chilbojon. A tabernacle was created by hollowing out a cliff, and inside stands a 2.5-meter Buddhist rock structure. Unfortunately, the nose of the main Buddha has been severely damaged. Yahweh 
코를 갈면서 코를 갈면서 의식을 행합니다. During the Joseon period, Korean Buddhism assimilated with shamanism. The relief of Buddha's triad of Sammaksa Temple is different from the other triad Buddhas because the flaming light Buddha is used as the main Buddha of worship. The Buddha's rock images after the Joseon period had more square and plump characteristics than from the other periods. The mountain god hall and the shrine hall of the Big Dipper were introduced in Buddhist temples, and Buddhist temples became a place of worship where people prayed for a newborn son. It is now up to us to lift the dark shadows left behind by the former policy of appraising Confucianism and rejecting Buddhism. Although it is impossible to turn back time, it is possible to rebuild the Buddhist culture. The faith in Buddhist rock carvings carries on today. One can create a Buddhist rock carving or pray earnestly to it. However, all of us are tied under the law of causality. Today, we are able to leave behind a legacy to our younger generation that is even deeper than the foresights of these Buddhist rock carvings. Even without a chisel, each of us are creating a Buddhist rock carving in our hearts every day. The legacy of Korean Buddhism foretold by these rock carvings are good reflections of Buddhism of our time. It is time to reflect upon these Buddhist rock carvings to introspect if we are performing the appropriate Buddhist services for our time. The 1600-year-old history of Korean Buddhism solidly continues on today. What the 21st century capitalist period demand from the virtues of Buddhists today is to find happiness in one's own life and to renunciate all wrong and mistaken ideologies. This is the only way to smile back at the Buddha with the serene and pure smile, like that of the smile of Pekje.